Good morning, good morning. Today, I would like to show you a mile and a half stretch of road on Sanibel that is not to be missed. As we cross over Tarpon Bay Road and travel up the Sanibel Captiva Road, there are four must-see stops. First up on the left is the Bailey Matthews National Shell Museum. From humble beginnings in 1984, what you see before you now is a fantastic museum and interestingly the only museum in the United States devoted solely to shells and mollusks. There are 30 permanent exhibits and a living gallery that gives visitors a chance to see and touch some of the living creatures that create the shells. There is a gift shop and they also offer daily off-site beach walks among other programs. Visit shellmuseum.org for more information. Next up is the superb Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation, or SCCF as it is known. Founded in 1967, SCCF is dedicated to the conservation of coastal habitats and aquatic resources. Today, SCCF is the largest private landowner on Sanibel. They manage more than 1,200 acres on Sanibel, plus more than 600 additional acres on Captiva and other islands. SCCF has two main educational sites, the one you see here and the one on Periwinkle Way. The building you see is a nature centre and behind the centre is the Eric Lindblad Preserve which comprises of 212 acres. There are four miles of interlocking trails on the preserve called the Sanibel Slough Trail. Five other preserves open to the public can be found dotted around the island. Visit sccf.org for more information. As a quick side note, we are now passing over the Island Water Association. The IWA is a member-owned non-profit that was formed in 1965. Initially, it purchased water from the Greater Pine Island Water Association. In 1973, IWA opened their own facility and eventually ceased purchasing water from Pine Island in 1986. The water is provided using reverse osmosis and water from deep wells. Coming up on the right is the outstanding J.N. Dingdarling National Wildlife Refuge. The refuge was established in 1945, thanks largely to efforts by Sanibel Island residents and famed editorial cartoonist J.N. Dingdarling. The best place to start is the Free Visitor and Education Centre. The centre is full of educational displays, videos and interactive programmes. There is also a wonderful gift shop. Wildlife Drive should be your next stop. It is a four mile long road adjacent to the visitor centre and is teeming with wildlife. You can drive your own car, bike, walk or take a guided tram tour with a naturalist. In addition to Wildlife Drive, there are three other trails to explore. The drive is open every day except Fridays. Visit fws.gov and search for Ding Darling for more information. And lastly is the Clinic for the Rehabilitation of Wildlife, or by the acronym CROW as it's also known. This wonderful organisation was started in 1968 when Islander Shirley Walter found a royal tern that had been hit by a car. Finding no services available for injured wildlife, she took the bird to her Sanibel home. Fast forward to the present day, the superb facility you see before you is a teaching hospital and a visitor education center dedicated to saving wildlife. Approximately 3,500 wildlife patients are cared for each year. The visitor education center offers behind the scenes views into Crow's animal care. They have live camera feeds, interactive displays and daily presentations. Visit crowclinic.org for more details. You now see why this is a must visit part of Sanibel. A 1.5 mile stretch of road with four fantastic world class facilities that are just waiting for you to discover. My name is Nick Adams. Come and join me on the next one.